Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We finally got two things that we were asking for in terms of content in FC25, but with those two things that we got, EA just needed to do a little bit more and they would have been absolutely insane. We have to talk about SBCs from yesterday and the brand new rush mode. I want to hone in on those today and also talk about what's to come with this market, guys. We had prices going up a little bit yesterday with Squad Battle Rewards, but once again, Squad Battle Rewards brings the supply to the market like crazy, and the market is still rising, which is a great thing, and I wanna talk about that. Will it continue into this week as we start a brand new week of content, or will EA have some surprises to throw our way? We're gonna discuss all that and more today, guys. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Let's go to the SBCs and cover that Sunday content Content from yesterday first with a challenge SBC that is once again worth doing this one for a premium Electrum players pack it's very easy to get done a little bit of a hybrid squad here you need nine gold players at the very least 22 chemistry there's a couple of nation and league requirements but it's only 4,000 coins to do and it gives you honestly a pretty nice tradable pack and honestly you would think a tradable pack like this would bring some supply on the market and drop prices right well that didn't happen too much yesterday. I think it's just because it's an SBC here. It's a decent pack, not a crazy insane like store pack or something that's really big, but just a small pack like this. Those are little things that can make your ultimate team experience so much better. You never know what you're going to get from a marquee matchup pack or doing a simple SBC like this. Maybe since it's an Electrum pack, maybe you even get a silver that sells for 5k right now. And boom, that's giving you some more coins to use in other areas. That SBC is a must complete at some point before it goes away. Now let's talk about the player SBC, of course, that we have to discuss, and that was the man himself, Alan St. Maximum. We finally got the SBC, guys. Um, EA, you had one job here. We were talking about this SBC. We were so excited for it because this had so much potential. We wanted a good card for good value, and unfortunately, guys, this card is not good value. I think EA's pricing this a little high for the upgrade that he got because it's a live card, but once again, these cards take so long to get upgraded. Let's talk about the good with this card. He's got Technical Plus, he's got Trickster, and he has Quick Step. So his dribbling and his pace is going to be nuts. And for that reason, I know some people will do the SBC. And if that's you, go for it. Do the SBC. Have fun with the card. 77 reactions and 83 composure. I know we're in the early do doors of the game still, but that's really, really low there. He does have a couple of roll pluses at the left mid spot only. And of course, he has the five star skills and the four star week. But the problem comes in with the value. 116,000 coins. I mean, yeah, it's not as expensive as Jota but it's still 116k and the upgrade from his gold card that's plus 5 overall and he got nothing above plus 5 in his individual stats plus 4 defending and physical plus one pace one dribbling three shooting and two passing like what is that upgrade for a plus five overall again i get it ea probably doesn't want to juice this card up too much because it's a live item and it has upgrades to come but this card right now I'd rather use Gold Rashford for the price and for the value. He's almost the same card for 20,000 coins, and you probably would have a chance to pack him untradeable like I have already. You know what I'm saying? That That's where this value is not good with his SBC. Sure, it's a fun card. He's got the skills. He's going to be great in game. He's going to be so fun to use. But you might as well just go save your coins and save your fodder for something else bigger and better and go get a Rashford like this for 20,000 coins. I don't know. Again, I see the positive with this SBC, with the play styles that he's got. He's going to be met up, but man, I also see plenty of negatives with the price. An 87 rated squad. If this was an 84 and an 84, we would be there. Or an 84 and an 85 rated squad even. It could have been so much cheaper for the boost that they gave him, and that is really the problem. So, that's kind of my thoughts on the ASM SBC. I think that Rashford comparison really does it for me, because if you compare those two cards, they're actually so similar. Rashford has more in-game stats, actually, than Alan St. Maxima does. So, pretty crazy. Do that SPC if you want to, but I'm going to be staying away from it personally, looking at my squad and saving up fodder for something that's more worth doing. We're going to have more live player SBCs for sure, so it's important to try to pick your spots of which ones will be the best to do for the long term and which ones fit your team at the moment. Now, we didn't have any new cards added to packs yesterday inside of the mini release. That was something that we were hoping to see, or not maybe not hoping, but expecting to see. Maybe that Isco um, and some of those other players like Godfrey that we were maybe 
thinking we were going to see. Maybe they're not doing a mini with these guys. If they didn't drop it on Saturday or yesterday on Sunday, I'd have to imagine we're not going to get one. Like a mini release on a Monday wouldn't make sense. EA have really never done that in the past. So I guess there's maybe a slight chance that could happen today. But honestly, it feels like now all those players like the Julian Brandt to throw into that as well would maybe be a part of Team 2 of Road to the Knockouts, which we already have some really big names leaked for. And we'll touch on that just a bit at the end of the video. Let's keep going with yesterday's content, though, with probably the thing that I was most excited to see a new rush mode because, man, we had the silver rush mode. We've had this welcome to rush, but we needed something new and fresh, and we got it. We got the defense is offense. Guys, I love this idea. This is incredible. Prove your center backs can score goals in this limited time event, which it's not showing right now for me when it expires, but I think it's only out for like three days. It's not out for very long. This is so sick. You basically, everybody when you log in has center backs. That's the only type of player that you can choose. And you're trying to score goals with center backs. Limited time event, kind of like a flash rush event, if you will. I love the idea. This is incredible. You actually can in complete evolutions now, finally, in an Evo. If you're doing a center back evolution in, uh, what is that, that Supreme one that gives a bunch of pace. Like, I'm thinking of doing Kuti Romero. Is it Sprint Supreme or whatever it may be? What is, yeah, Sprint Supreme, this one right here, that gives the pace. I would love to use that Kuti Romero and complete evolution progress inside of evolutions that are inside of rush that you haven't really been able to do unless you're evolving a very low rated player because of the max 79 cap on this only other mode that we have had. Now, it's also, if you notice, the first tradable. You can actually go into this and use tradable cards. You could buy somebody off the market. You could go buy the best center back in the game. You could buy Maldini, who I think is the most, ex center back in the, most expensive center back in the game at like 2 million coins. You could go buy this card and use him in that rush mode. That's pretty crazy. That's the first time we've seen that. We're going to have to watch out for it in the future. It just feels like it's lacking something. And I think it's lacking some extra objective or extra even just SP, season points XP as it used to be called, right? We're all trying to level up. There's really not a lot of motivation to play this except for it's just fun. And I think the problem that we're feeling with this rush mode right now is it's fun. We want to play it, but EA sp uh, set the expectations too high. Guys, the first week we had weekly rush objectives that, yes, they gave us the decent packs, but they also gave us SP. And that was a big reason to want to go and grind this. EA set that expectation right away that we got the SP for playing every single tier of this. And it wasn't a whole lot, but it was a decent amount. And it felt like you were making progress in the season pass. Now, they did add, or maybe this was there before, but there's a play three rush inside of the weekly objective that does give you 300 SP. But again, if it's not going to be SP in here every single week, okay, we're going to have to adjust our expectations. But we started with SP in here last week, and that was like awesome. And we expected it for this week as well. I think that's what we're missing with this latest mode is if it's going to be like a flash mode and it's going to be a short-term fun extra thing to do even if there's not going to be sp involved like maybe just a couple extra even if it's just 75 plus packs with one objective reward being like an 82 times two a simple objective like that that just adds a little bit of like icing on the cake for something fun like this even in the short time period this is going to be out, I think that's what that is missing. Like I'm saying, that's that ASM is missing a bit of an upgrade to make the card good in terms of stats, right? And this rush mode is missing a little bit extra rewards. It doesn't have to be much. It just has to be something to kind of curb the edge of like, what's my reason to play this besides just having fun? And I think, yeah, sure, rush is fun. And it just, you want to go in here to have a blast, especially if your teammates are going to pass. I want to play this mode because it just sounds like chaos. The silver mode sounded like fun. I only played that a little bit, especially because it wasn't out very long either. This mode sounds fun because it's all center backs and that's going to be just chaos to play. And it sounds like a lot of fun. But again, I think we just need that little bit of extra reasoning to play it. If it was for SP, another objective, I think that would be all that we would need to have a little more fun with that. So EA, I feel like you were this close with that content, bigger upgrade to ASM and a little bit of an objective addition to that rush mode. And we 
would be having a lot of fun instead of it just being like, okay, solid. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you guys think about that rush mode. I know for sure the rivals grind comes before that qualifying for foot champs this week because there's so much going on there. The squad battles reset as well. Getting those rewards up matters a lot. And I think rush, yeah, it's fun, but it's kind of taking that back seat because those objectives and some of that uh, stuff you can acquire is not there. All right, I'll stop yapping about rush. Let's look at the market, guys, because yesterday we talked extensively about prices on the market, hopefully going up after squad battle rewards. I was able to make some good coins, but the coins that I made uh, the most on were these cards that were out of packs. Florian Verts, he went from what I get him at 77,000 coins to 80K on bid. He was up at 90,000 coins because he was out of packs. Griezmann, I sold all these before content. He went up a little bit. Like I bought him at 97, 98, sold him at 110. That's not a bad flip, but the market definitely did not spike squad bad rewards deserve our respect guys i'm not buying anything next week until after squad battle rewards i'm just gonna wake up when i wake up and buy what's low because man squad battle rewards supply the market like crazy every single week it happened again this week i bought cards at prices then they were a little bit lower after squad battle rewards once again and don't get me wrong there were a lot of cards that did go up you see this right this is the the graph yesterday of how the market moved leading into squad battles it was up a little bit down overall Squad battles came out, market tanked for like two, three hours, and then you started to see prices rebound back up. This happened a lot on gold cards. Take a look at Kunde, right? Kunde was 100,000 coins, boom. Pop, uh, pops back up to 120,000 coins. The road to the knockout cards got insanely cheap. This Cherokee card is one that I like. He went from 240 down to 180 and then back up to 220. It was crazy. You guys remember, I tried to flip the Frim Pong on Saturday, right? Yesterday was the day to make that sort of quick flip trade off of the big drop. He went from 750 down to 600 back up to 700 689 where he is now you had tons of opportunity to trade with those cards trade with the current impacts team of the week they had price spikes and gold cards as well moved really good yesterday because of the way squad battle supply hit the market once again so i'm not buying before squad battles next week no way i'm buying afterwards and we're gonna buy in that low that dip period maybe we'll watch road to the knockouts next week on Saturday, Team 2, or sorry, Sunday, as they come out and get packed, and we see a big drops there. We've watched that happen now this week with Team 1. Next week, we're going to be able to make a lot of, a lot of coins off of that as we see Team 2 come out, I think. Now, as the rest of the market in terms of meta goes, there's still good demand. You saw that after content yesterday. You saw prices continue to go up in some areas. Not everywhere, though. Saliba's like 240,000 coins, I think I did see. He's down like 5K right now. But yesterday, after content, you saw the bigger price rises. He went from 220 up to 240 as people were like, okay, content yesterday was just decent. I'm going to go out and buy those players for my team that I've been wanting that I need. Nico Williams, how much is he right now? 140,000 coins. Kind of the same thing that happened with him. He was down right at content. Boom. Boom. Flying back up to 136,000 coins. The the Griezmann, who I sold at, yeah, he's even higher now. I could have waited on Griezmann and sold him later. He went from like 100K where I bought him right here before rewards. He stayed at right around 100. And then after content spiked to like 113, what he is right now. So you had some decent price rises for sure, but not like crazy price rises. You had like just like small swings. You didn't have big booms like i think we were some of us at least myself i was hoping to see more of a bigger boom but those supply packs from squad battles again they're just absolutely crazy man everything that is in packs really got hit and it even makes some of the cards that are out of packs like team of the week one cards drop a little bit too as everything is taking a hit with that supply so the good thing for the market right now though is it feels really healthy. It feels like a lot of people are buying cards for teams, and we know, like we've been saying, that we have a lot of weekend league demand, and that's why I've got coins in flips right now trying to trade with some cards. I bought a VVD, um, especially off of the news that he is going to be in team number two of Road to the Knockouts. I bought a VVD for 350 um, and he is currently up to almost 370 I mean, it might be the Jude Bellingham situation all over again. But this VVD is going to be rising in price. Like, where is Jude Bellingham? That's a card a lot of people have at the moment. Jude Bellingham is still 380 which is really, really crazy to me. But VVD seems more rare and has a lot of more price spikes than Jude Bellingham. So I'm going to hold on to that card. But those are the types of cards that I think could continue to rise this week. Leal, Bellingham, VVD, Teo, Salah, Bonmati. I was surprised to see Holland is down to 250 after yesterday's content. I mean, he was as low as 240, 246, goes up to 260. I'm surprised to see that he is still low. 
There's going to be way less supply today on Monday. There's no rewards, no squad battle rewards to be paid out. So I think the market should be a pretty safe place unless EA have some surprises for us. And it's going to be a good market to trade in for the next couple of days. But what surprises could EA have? Let's talk about that a little bit right now as well as we get into today's Monday content. Well, Mondays always bring us the upgrade packs, guys, right? The 77 doubles last week. I'm going to open my squad battle rewards today on stream so that I can fund a couple of these with maybe some of the non-rares and other objective packs that I will get that will fund the last couple of these. Um, I would expect we get another upgrade pack today. Not that it's going to be necessarily worth it, but that would be a part of content I would expect. I just checked Foot Scoreboard's Twitter. There was nothing new there in terms of added pack code from what I saw. Maybe there will be some added early today for a new upgrade pack. Maybe they'll just re-release the 77 double. We'll just have to see. But Mondays are upgrade days uh, for us almost every single week. Now, I want to shout out something that could happen. It could also not happen. But I want to at least speak it out into existence so that we are aware if it does come. UEFA marquee matchups. Guys, it's a Champions League week. We have got Champions League fixtures coming out on Tuesday, the 1st of October. Wednesday, we got Europa League Conference League on Thursday as well. We have games actually do yeah we have europa league on thursday we do we have games this week guys and there's a at least a slight potential especially because we are in a ucl themed promo that we get uefa marquee matchups and in the past that has been an early game type of spc that has brought some supply to the market and it has made prices dip depending on when it's been released, how good the packs are. Think of it basically as a regular set of marquee matchups that we get on Thursdays with decent packs, less SBC, so it's quicker to do, and you get tradable pack supply. It, it, it would have the potential to drop the market a little bit. Not like a crazy drop, but it would have the potential to supply some of those cards that are right now in the middle tier and even some of the higher tier cards here. Maybe you see like a 10K dip on one of these sorts of players. Could they go up higher afterwards? Absolutely. But I just wanted to shout that out because there's there's a potential that we could get some pack supply and that would hurt some of the rises on the market that we have seen in the past day or so and that we hope to continue to see as we start this week off with a lot of gameplay demand. So I'm not cr trying to say be worried about that and like sell everything because of that. I'm still right now not investing in a team. Personally, I don't do a lot of that. I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to do that. I don't think uh, that right now if you bought players for your team in the last day, that you have to sell them because of the maybe the worry of a UEFA marquee matchups. If you're if you've bought any of these mid to top tier players like 50k or above, you should be decently safe and not gonna lose a ton of coins in just one day on a Monday. You should be pretty good. Um, so I would continue to hold on to those, use those teams, build up towards those, towards those rewards in qualifiers and rivals and all that grind. You gotta use the players right at some point. If you've been waiting to buy a team. I think you got to go use those players. That's an, that's my opinion. Get those rewards locked and loaded. And then after that, you can decide what you want to do with your team. But hopefully the day today on the market is pretty chill with some good rises and good opportunities for fluctuations. I want to talk about trading today. And as we get into the week, guys, heroes, icons, these road to the knockout cards and informs. I like them because of their rarity. The gold cards, it feels like gold cards are just going to fall off faster than ever this year, honestly. Their prices don't move as much. The special cards are coming out faster than ever with more SBCs, more squad foundations, more evolutions. Guys, we a lot of you might have like two or three evolutions in your starting 11 right now because of how decent they have been with the chain evos as well. That's less demand for some of these more basic gold cards. And it, even in the early game, we've seen less price rises and it probably has to do with the amount of untradeables through evolutions, objectives, and SBCs that are all there now. People don't need to go buy as many gold cards for their team unless they're chasing a marquee player. And what cards have been going up the most? The marquee players, the most expensive ones, like the Puteas, the 600,000 coins now. Uh, the Teo Hernandez, who is still right at 400,000 coins. It's those players that are doing the best. So, yeah, I think I would be a little bit careful with the gold cards if I was just trading this week. If it's for your team, grind it out, get those games done, and then sell the player when you're done playing. But for, if it's just for the flips, I think the heroes are great. Uh, especially just look at their graphs on Footbin. Trading with heroes, you just got to trust it a bit. And during the week, 
is when trading with these sorts of cards is at its peak and its best because in between those reward stages like squad battles yesterday and division rivals actually on division rivals is a good day to trade with these cards as well but you don't have to be worried about as much supply of course you could have the one-off sbc here or there but it's not like once we get to monday of each and every week you've got a week in league rewards that's being you know claimed by everybody it's not like you have squad battle reward supply it's going to be hitting and rocking the market sure you have leaks and you there's always a little bit of what if situation there but usually the first couple days of the week are pretty safe for trading with icons and heroes and i would say too the road to the knockouts some of these cards got really low yesterday and they rebounded like ollie watkins people might wake up today on monday and want to go try this card out and you might see him uh go up in price a little bit demarco they've got a pretty easy matchup this week in terms of a uh game for the champions league interplay servena sveda I'm probably butchering the pronunciation there. Um, is that Red Star? I think that's Red Star. But they play them, right? And sure, they didn't win their first match, so DeMarco doesn't have any progress towards an upgrade right now, but that might be a card that people just start to buy a little bit because A, he's hyped links to Taram, and B, he's a live card. Guys, these are live cards. Even though we have leaks for Team 2 starting to come out, which looks better than Team 1 in my opinion, I think there's going to be some of these cards that move up a little bit, and I think they could be good to trade with in the short term. I'm talking like couple hour time frame frame of flips, fluctuation trades. That's the sort of stuff that I'll be looking at this week on this game, guys. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now at the moment. It's also, I've noticed, the out-of-packs cards. Florian Verts, Rafinha, uh, Diani, Frimpong, Alvarez. Any of those cards that you maybe have. How much is Doku at the moment? I know that was a very popular investment, too. 31k so he's even going up a bit these sorts of players you probably want to sell by tuesday i would imagine even if they're in the promo friday team i would probably try to sell them by tuesday but these cards are as well great to trade with at the moment especially as we look towards next week with a new team of the week and a new promo team people are already going to be investing in those cards kind of like i already have the vvd right but these are cards that just without the, the supply on the market, they maintain a higher price. You just got to make sure you sell before they come back into packs. But like Verts, literally yesterday is the reason I had a good day trading. Bought him literally right down here for 77 to 80K. Sold him literally right here at his peak. He went back down to 83. And look, he's probably going to go to like 90,000 coins again. So those sorts of players, Luis Diaz as well. He's a sell in my opinion here today tomorrow because he's back up to almost 70k but i think he was even like 63k those cards are just rare so they fluctuate more and that means more opportunities for coins but guys we have a lot of information to look forward to with the leaks of road to knockouts team two harry kane vvd loftus cheek um barcola has been leaked as well nico williams dibala garnacho some of the leaks that we've already looked at team two looks pretty cracked another reason why i'm just kind of being careful with the cards that i have right now i picked up an se and a flip and i have the vvd that's where my coins are at the moment and i plan on holding the vvd and listing it for lazies 100k over just in case i get super lucky and somebody thinks it's you know a, a, the right price or i get a lazy sale or something like that that's kind of what we're looking at right now with the trades i'm excited to trade more today grind through the division rivals a bit open the squad battle rewards see if we can get a good pull rewards have treated me well in the past week so we're hoping that this week can also treat us well with those rewards and of course guys we'll stay up to date on all the content we'll be looking out for what sort of spcs we could get today another player spc i think is possible ea is doing a lot of those we'll see what they have in store for us today on a Monday. But that's going to be a video for me today, guys. If you did enjoy, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. I will see you guys in the stream today. It's been Nate for the count and catch you there. Peace out.